after the afternoon. We're just moving right along, aren't we? Doing a great job. Uh, we have uh, Mateus Benoni. Uh, he is a research scientist with the USDA ARS in Florence, South Carolina. He's been there for the last 20 years. Uh, his area of expertise area of work is dealing with animal manure treatment, also with solid liquid separation using the polymers, uh, biological in removal uh, through uh, nitrification and, and uh, animox, uh, phosphorus recovery, also ammonia recovery. He has over 200 publications and also 10 patents. So with that, I'll turn it over to you. Yes. Uh, I would like to uh, acknowledge my uh, co-authors, uh, Marie Cruz, Garcia, she's uh, from Spain, from the Instituto of Tecnológico Agrario in Castilla and León. Uh, and she was a visiting scientist uh, working in my lab uh, many times. Uh, Patrick Louvet, uh, he is a postdoc with ARS and uh, area associate, he is uh, here. And, uh, <coughs> the topic of the presentation is <coughs> the use and improvement of recovery of ammonia from swine manure using uh, gas permeable membranes and aeration. That is uh, the new part that we put uh, in the presentation today, the use of aeration. Uh, <coughs> the problem that we have uh, in uh, the southeast, in North Carolina, especially uh, is uh, surplus nitrogen and ammonia emissions uh, because of uh, animal manures. Uh, this uh, problem is common to other areas in the world. Uh, we have in some counties uh, in uh, North Carolina an excess of uh, surplus of nitrogen that is more than what the land can assimilate. And at the same time, uh, in those uh, counties, you can see a large amount of uh, ammonia emissions. Uh, nitrogen, especially associated with these open lagoons, nitrogen that goes into the air and is lost. So uh, there is an interest to uh, recover uh, the nitrogen. Uh, one of the main interest is that uh, the uh, fertilizer nitrogen is expensive and uh, especially so in the last uh, 15 years with an increase of uh, maybe uh, four times in the price of uh, the fertilizers. Also, uh, the use of uh, fertilizers that consumes 28% uh, of the total energy that is used in agriculture. So, so uh, by uh, be able to uh, extract the uh, nitrogen uh, from manure, we will be able to save uh, energy use in agriculture. <coughs> so, um, uh, our uh, technology that uh, we are uh, developing is the recovery of ammonia from manures and uh, we do this uh, from uh, liquid manures and air in uh, livestock houses. Uh, there is a poster outside that uh, I will show you uh, a pilot study that we are conducting in Maryland, uh, extracting uh, the ammonia from the air. Uh, the topic of the presentation today is to extract uh, the nitrogen from uh, the liquid manure. And uh, how, what is this uh, technology int, uh, intend to do? Uh, we try to uh, remove the ammonia gas uh, right from the liquid, uh, from the liquid manure before the ammonia goes into the air. So, so we extract the nitrogen while the ammonia is in the liquid. And uh, the nitrogen is recovered from, recovered from the liquid manure in a concentrated, uh, purified form. Uh, the uh, technology uh, received a U.S. patent this year uh, for the USDA. Uh, the patent uh, is systems and methods for reducing the ammonia emission from liquid effluent and recovering the ammonia. Uh, the technology basically has uh, two components. Uh, one is the recovery modules where uh, we have the membranes and uh, the other part is the concentrated tank, concentrated tank where we concentrate the ammonia. And uh, uh, we recirculate acid between the concentrated tank and the uh, recovery module and uh, we uh, keep adding acid 
but the pH goes up, we try to keep the pH between <coughs> a band of one to two. And by doing that, uh, we recover all uh, the ammonia. Uh, we did experiments with manure from uh, North Carolina and also uh, concentrated raw manure uh, in Spain. So I'm going to present uh, both cases. Uh, for this research, we use uh, membranes that are made for expanded EPTFE, that is uh, commonly known as the Teflon. Uh, but this is a, a stretch form, uh, and by stretching this, uh, we get a porous material that is uh, hydrophobic. So the membranes were made uh, in Rock Hill, uh, South Carolina, by uh, Philip Scientific, and uh, we were uh, using a tubular type of membranes. Uh, this is a, a tubular type. And, uh, the concept, you see that uh, we put an acid solution, and uh, the ammonia gas uh, permeate from the hydro uh, permeate through the hydrophobic uh, pores and combine combined with the uh, acid to form ammonium ammonium salt uh, fertilizer and uh, we submerge these uh, uh, membranes in uh, the dirty manure uh, the liquid uh, doesn't go through just uh, the gas. Is it not forward, going forward? That's it. Okay. Uh, uh, this is uh, the way that uh, the system the membrane system works. Uh, we have uh, a membrane with uh, uh, gas uh, pores, and this is hydrophobic. Uh, the ammonium that is associated to ammonia, and uh, the gas, the ammonia gas, goes through the membrane, and we put the strip solution, and uh, we concentrate it into an uh, ammonia salt. One of the, the first things that we did is to uh, put this uh, exposed to uh, soluble carbon, glucose or uh, potassium, potassium ephthalate is a primary CD, CD standard and uh, we uh, pass water through the stripping solution and uh, we uh, demonstrated that uh, no uh, COD or soluble carbon goes through. So, uh, and this is a new concept because uh, typically uh, to remove ammonia First, we remove the carbon and the solids. And in this situation, we're removing ammonia from dirty water. And uh, this is one of the first uh, experiments that we did uh, in Spain. Uh, we went uh, to do the experiment there because uh, they have typically raw manure with a lot of uh, solids. So they don't do too much uh, pit uh, treatment or flushing. So uh, we look at three manures with different uh, strengths, from uh, four grams per liter to uh, 30 grams per liter. We call it high strength. Uh, ammonia uh, nitrogen from 1,000 uh, to uh, 2,200 uh, parts per million. And uh, um, in in uh, this experiment. Uh, what uh, we saw is that uh, as we increase the strength of the manure, the uh, uh, membranes uh, remove the nitrogen at the higher rate. And uh, that is uh, represented here, uh, uh, milligrams per liter per day in this uh, bench uh, testing. And uh, we were able to uh, remove ammonia at the high rate. Uh, and uh, uh, most of the ammonia that we remove, we can account for, we recover into a clear solution. Uh, one of uh, the parts that you can see here is that ammonia, as ammonia gets lower, it takes uh, more time uh, to, to extract from, from the membrane. And uh, you see within one curve, we're comparing the three curves together. Uh, what we typically do is to add K 
chemical to the manure, uh, sodium hydroxide. And by doing that, uh, we increase uh, the dissociation of ammonium into ammonia. And here uh, you see uh, when we apply alkali and we increase the pH, uh, here is pH. Uh, we increase the pH when it goes below 7.7. .7. We increase the pH to about 8.5 to 9, and then as ammonia depleted, the pH goes down, and we keep doing until we recover all the ammonia. So, uh, uh, th this is a representation of the same process. Uh, we add alkali, and we increase the rate of ammonia gas production and the ammonia uh, gas uh, recovery. So, so we are applying alkali. And that is the full point of this presentation, is that uh, we have two ways of increasing uh, the pH. One is applying the alkali, and the other is uh, using uh, low rate aggregation, uh, and that is the topic of uh, my presentation today. We are able to substitute uh, chemical with low rate low rate aviation. And the way that this works is that we apply, if we apply a low amount of air, the bicarbonate that is here and dissociate into hydroxide and CO2. The CO2 leaves and uh, the hydroxide combined with ammonia and uh, we produce uh, ammonia gas and we increase the rate of recovery by the membrane system. So, uh, in uh, this experiment, when we use low rate aggregation, uh, we're able to increase the, the pH of the manure about one unit. And uh, we have to apply no amount of air so as uh, to inhibit uh, nitrification. And we use uh, such so much, maybe 5% uh, of the amount of air that we need for nitrification. And we also add uh, into uh, the solution, into the manure, the nitrification inhibitor. And uh, that is used like uh, uh, NSAR or nitra nitrapyrine, uh, about 10 parts per million of nitrification inhibitor we have been using to uh, stop uh, nitrification. Uh, the experimental uh, setup, uh, we were using uh, uh, an acid solution that is recirculated continuously uh, through uh, the membrane and uh, we aggregate the membrane. In here uh, you have the uh, uh, vibes and uh, flow meter that we use to regulate the amount of air and uh, these are the reactor chambers and uh, the pumps above that. Mm, so, uh, in uh, the first experiment with manure from Spain, uh, this was raw manure from a pit and the slatted floor. Uh, it was a farrowing uh, saw house. Uh, the ammonia was about uh, 2,400 parts per million, uh, 2,700 parts per million of TKN, and 16,000 parts per million of uh, COV. Uh, this is the manure without without any uh, treatment, just the raw manure coming, coming out of uh, the houses from the pits. And uh, uh, in here, uh, the, the first graph, uh, you see how the pH changes. And, uh, we're using manure that uh, has been aerated in red, uh, a control manure that uh, sends it up with the membrane system but we did not apply any air. And, and you see that the moment you apply a little bit of air, uh, the manure within uh, four hours, it goes uh, about one unit higher. And uh, in uh, the next uh, graph, uh, what you see is uh, milligrams <coughs> of ammonia uh, recovered. And uh, we see a large uh, difference because the pH is higher and the availability of ammonia gas to the membrane is higher. So in this experiment we were able to recover 99% of the ammonia that was contained in the raw manure uh, by using a membrane system and a low aeration. That was much higher than the control one did not apply uh, air. 
So uh, when uh, we put some numbers to, to this development and we look at uh, the cost of applying chemical, sodium hydroxide, we need to apply two grams per liter to keep the pH high. Uh, with low radiation, uh, we apply uh, very little air and when uh, we did the calculations, uh, these are uh, dollars per thousand uh, peaks per year and that is uh, the uh, total cost, operational and capital cost. And uh, you see a decrease from 85 uh, hundred uh, dollars uh, per thousand peaks per year to about 700. So that is the advantage of using this low radiation instead of <coughs> the alter, alkali chemical. Uh, the second experiment uh, was done with uh, recovery of ammonia from a cover lagoon in effluent in North Carolina. Uh, this is a research that was done by uh, Patrick Duby. Uh, we use uh, in, in North Carolina, when they cover the lagoon, um, the ammonia concentration goes up, maybe uh, from uh, 600 parts per million to you know, more than uh, 2,000 parts per million. This is the concentration of ammonia uh, 2,090. Uh, most of the nitrogen was already uh, digested. Uh, the CUB was low, uh, as well as the uh, total solids compared with the uh, raw manure. And uh, in this experiment, uh, uh, again, we did the comparison between ideation and non-ideation. And uh, in one case, uh, you can see uh, fall of the pH increase quickly, and uh, the other stay uh, in about eight for the duration of the experiment. So, so we see the same response in two different uh, maneuvers. Uh, here we have the carbonate alkalinity, and uh, you see that uh, when we apply the radiation treatment, uh, very quickly the uh, carbonate alkalinity is destroyed, and that is called increase uh, the pH. What is uh, interesting of this study is that in both situations we were able to remove uh, most of the ammonia. And, uh, for example, in the non aerated uh, this is milligrams of nitrogen per liter. Uh, we go from a little bit of 2,000, and in 25 days, uh, everything is removed. And on the other hand, in this axis, in the right axis, you see how much uh, is being recovered, the concentration in the recovery time. And uh, we concentrate in this situation uh, from 2,000 to about 12,000 uh, in the recovery time. Uh, when you compare with uh, the aerated manure, you can see clearly that the, the uh, chemistry is the same, or about the same, we're removing the nitrogen and recovering the nitrogen, but it takes five days. We cut from 25 days uh, to, to five days uh, treatment, and uh, that uh, is a lot of improvement in terms of cost. Uh, this is another graph where we see uh, mass removal versus concentration. This is mass. Uh, we see the red condition <coughs> in five days, and then uh, how uh, we uh, <coughs> remove from the liquid uh, uh, about uh, 3,000 milligrams of nitrogen, and all the nitrogen is accounted for in the other uh, recovery tank. So th this is uh, the summary data. Uh, we have a recovery of efficiencies of 98 uh, to 95 percent. Uh, uh, the unaccounted losses, I would think that the loss in the air were only 2 to 5 percent. So, so the process uh, works uh, very well with cover lagoon efforts. So as a, a summary, uh, we are uh, recovering the ammonia uh, from uh, liquid manures. Uh, with gas permeable membranes, we try to capture the ammonia emissions, and we capture uh, the ammonia before it even goes into the air. We can obtain a solution uh, with high concentration of nitrogen, between uh, uh, 5 to 10 percent nitrogen. And uh, now uh, we're finding that we can substitute chemical uh, with uh, low rate radiation. Um, 
my last slide is um, this uh, project that was uh, funded by uh, NRCS, uh, Conservation Innovation Grant. Uh, the project leader is uh, Dr. Jean Klassen at NC State University. And uh, it's a pilot that is trying to show all this uh, research. And it's going to be uh, demonstrated. The pilot module is already constructed with this uh, big uh, tool that is here. What is this other two uh, membranes? And uh, this summer we're going to be uh, rotated in three uh, management systems. Uh, one is uh, anaerobic digester, uh, another is a scraper, and another is a vent system. So those uh, projects, those uh, studies are scheduled for doing uh, in this unit. Uh, is mounted in a trailer and it's going to be rotated in farms. So with that, uh, I conclude my presentation. All right, thank you. Do you have any questions? Oh, back in the back. Is, uh, is this system isothermal? That's part one. Thank you. And also, uh, could you comment on the issue of fouling of your membrane? The, the first question is? First is your process isothermal? Do you have to heat the uh, feed uh, solution? No, uh, uh, the, um, the process is done uh, without any heating. Everything is ambient temperature. So uh, if uh, uh, you heat uh, the uh, manure, uh, you anticipate that release of ammonia may be uh, faster. But every other test that we did were uh, without any heating. Uh, for uh, the second question as uh, membrane falling, uh, we still uh, didn't have that experience. We didn't test this for more than one year. And uh, uh, the reason being is that uh, we're not passing water through the pores, uh, only gas goes through. Uh, after a couple of months, when we finish each experiment, uh, after about one month, we take it out and we wash it. Uh, this is Teflon, and sometimes there is a slime that comes easily out. Right. Was there one more question? I thought I saw that hand. Oh, great. Uh, you might have mentioned it, but uh, was there a pressure difference on the two sides of the membrane? Mm, no, that is no, no pressure. Essentially the same pressure. No. If you put pressure on the side that the ammonia was coming from, do you have any guess as to whether that would increase the, the rate? Um, uh, that is uh, something that uh, John Klassen was thinking about. He, mm -hmm. he, he was thinking the same times, and that is why he built this uh, uh, membrane, enclosed membrane. Maybe uh, he can increase the pressure in the, in the, uh, in the pannier side. But uh, we uh, don't apply any pressure, it's, and the recirculation is, is very, very slow. Uh, for example, in these uh, manure vessels that are about uh, one and a half liters, we recirculate uh, five liters per day. It's, we don't have any, any pressure. Okay. Um, and then the other thing is, uh, what about if you put on the side that the ammonia is moving to, uh, make it acidic, but not with sulfuric acid, but you know, in, in some of these cases, there's carbon dioxide available from, you know, scrub from biogas or something? Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, we have uh, that uh, showing in a diagram in the portal. There is a portal outside. And uh, what we were doing uh, is to apply, instead of acid, we replace the acid with water, just water. And uh, the, the CO2 uh, and the ammonia pass through the membrane. And uh, we are uh, forming uh, ammonium uh, bicarbonate. And uh, we were able to concentrate up to 4,000 parts per million uh, the solution and easily put it outside that data uh, just using water. Uh, and uh, that is still, uh, I didn't make uh, uh, economic calculations. Right now, I was happy that we were able to cut the ammonium, the hydroxide. Uh, with the low radiation, but I think if we can use as a water as the data that we are uh, obtaining now, uh, I think uh, this is uh, a technology that uh, farmers will have to adopt. Because
Thank you. 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 Thank you.